Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode six of the Mind and Muse podcast. This is my crafty corner of the world where I basically share with you any craft that I participate in during the weeks previous to my recording. For example, mostly crochet. I do some knitting every once in a while, some felting, and maybe even some sewing. And I share this with you. I share this with you on this channel uh, basically every two weeks. And I would like to thank all of those who return week after week and share their time with me. And I would also like to thank any new viewers that are just finding uh, this recording. Thank you for deciding to press the play button and for sticking around to hear what I have to share with you. I am recording this on a Sunday, which is not normal in, in my recording process, but it had to be this week. I am recording on Sunday, May the 20th, and it is early, about nine o'clock in the morning, and I've been trying as normal to get this done for the past half of an hour. And I'm recording on a new phone that I received as a gift for Mother's Day, so it has taken a little getting used to. But basically, I am coming to you from the island of Puerto Rico, the, in the Caribbean. I live on the western side of the island in a town called Aguada. And it is a very sunny day out and it will be getting hot very, very soon. It, it, it's funny because it did not, it wasn't like that in, in the early morning since I got up and started rustling around trying to get everything ready for this uh, filming. It was a very cool, breezy day, a very nice cool breeze. And now all of a sudden, the breeze is shut down and it's starting to get hot. So let's get on with this. Uh, I wanted to begin by referencing my last podcast. If you haven't seen it yet, then I'll put up a little link at the top of the screen so that you can go back an episode if you would like to, to kind of connect with what I'm going to be talking about in this episode. But during the previous episode, I had prepared an outfit. I had prepared uh, my presentation because I wanted to talk about Me Made May. Me Made May is an event that was created by Zoe in her podcast is, no, her blog spot, I'm sorry. She's a sewist and her blog uh, post is called So Zo, What Do You Know? And I'll put the, um, I'll write it out for you at the bottom of the screen. And in this blog post, I think maybe in this blog spot, maybe about nine, eight, nine years ago, she began the uh, Me Made May activity in which on her blog spot, you sign up and you commit to during the month of May using and wearing your Me Made garments. And it doesn't matter if you sew, if you crochet, if you knit, it doesn't matter what you make, and it's just an, an opportunity to applaud. Applaud the fact and celebrate the fact that you make your own clothes and, and that you wear them. Because what happens a lot of the times is that many of us makers are a little bit shy sometimes about wearing the things that we make. Uh, because sometimes especially if it's crochet. I've noticed that a lot with crochet and maybe even with sewing. I don't know. I don't really sew that much lately to, uh, to uh, be able to confirm that. But from what I've read and heard from other podcasts and what I've read on comments of other blog posts, some people believe that when they approach you and they make a comment on what you're wearing, oh, what an interesting blouse, or oh, what an interesting scarf. What they really mean is that, did you make that yourself? Because that looks kind of weird. But I personally don't feel that way. So I wanted to, I'm, I am not officially participating in Me Made May because if you officially participate, you go to Zoe's blog and you sign up and your, the sign up is basically in the comments, leaving a commitment to during the month of May, achieve a personal goal. A personal goal might be um, wearing five of my Me Made objects or a personal goal could be, but it doesn't have to be, making two or three more new uh, garments. 
a, it's all up to you. It's a personal goal. You set it and you just try to keep it during the month. So you're not competing with anybody. You're not trying to keep up to anybody else's standards. You're just trying to, if you invest so much time and money into making your own garments or accessories, you're just trying to promote a better relationship with those garments by wearing them. So last week I had prepared a an outfit that I wanted to share with you. And um, I am going to put up a short video or at least a picture of what I was wearing last week so that I can mention um, the maker, the designers. I was the maker, but the designers of those patterns. I was wearing a collar and the collar is a Peter Pan collar from uh, Lulu Makes, I believe, is that? Is that it? Let me check my notes here. Lulu loves. Lulu loves. At that point when I made it, you can refer um, to a podcast that I made jointly that I co-hosted with my daughter, uh, Clarissa Beth of Crochet Cakes. And it was episode five. If you go back to episode five, I'll put up a little card that will connect you if you want to go see it again. In that episode, it was my first appearance, my first sharing with her, and I uh, shared several collars that I had created. So that collar was by uh, Lulu Loves. I now watch her podcast and follow her, so I know her a little bit better. But it is a fantastic make for a simple design that looks nice. And, and in the previous podcast, I was wearing it on top of a t-shirt because I am not a t-shirt lady. I'm not a t-shirt gal not my favorite uh, piece of wardrobe. So in order to make a t-shirt more appealing to me then I just put a collar on top and I just think it looks a little bit more dainty. I keep on using that word lately, I don't know why. Yes, I do, but I'm not, I'm not gonna go into that here. Um, so I just try and um, add a little bit of zest to the t-shirt by adding a collar. And so that collar is the Peter Pan collar by Lulu Loves. And I also had on a ring. That was my first um, attempt to make crochet rings. And I made, it was near, I believe it was near Mother's Day. So that might not have been the first episode that I come out. It might have been the second one, but it was near Mother's Day. And so we were presenting a lot of small items that you could make to give us a gift for your moms. And one of them were the, uh, a couple of rings they were rose rings, if you'll take a look at this one that I was wearing last week. And it was um, this one. I also had on a collar in that episode that was, I crocheted the rose and felted it. But for the ring, I merely used from very thin cotton yarn and I did the exact same pattern, but I made it using a very tiny hook and very thin thread and then I created the ring. I believe you can find the pattern for that rose on petals, petals to pico.com. And uh, I mentioned that in this, that episode five of Crochet Cakes podcast also. So you can go take a look at some of the things we were making there. That was my uh, attempt to connect with this idea of me made May where we're I very rarely make things that I don't like. So if I like them and I put the time in them, then I should wear them and I also should share them here with everybody who follows me. So that was last week's attempt that I don't know, it just skipped my mind. I guess I had started so many times over and over again that I just couldn't, um, I forgot, <laughs> I just forgot. So I wanted to go back to it and also start this episode off with another, with another me made object which is my finished object for this week, which is another, in this case, it's really not a collar. I'm using it as one because when my daughter left, she left behind some clothes that she didn't think she would be wearing or taking in. I'm not a big fan of throwing stuff away when I think they're still good and they can still get some use out of it. Of course, she's about 20 years younger than I am, that not all of the, the um, fashion um, that she uses not all of the styles go along with my age, but you know, I try to hack them. I try to hack them. So she left behind this, um, what would you call it? Well, we would call over here maybe a uh, jumper, but I know if you're in the UK, jumper means something else. It's just a, a pantsuit maybe, a, a 
pants. Of, I don't know what else to call it. But it's one of those pullovers where it has the pants and the top. I'll stand up and take a step back so you can see why I like it. And the reason that I liked it is because, well, actually, I'm going to take a, take a step forward. Oh, uh, but you can't. I'm going to go back. I don't know how you could see it on the back, but it's got these elephants. It's got um, this fabric which has elephants on it. It's very Indian. It's a rayon. It's a rayon fabric, and so it's a, it's a balloon type of pants, and, and it all comes up to the top. And at the top, it is sleeveless. And I am not a big fan of sleeveless because as I've aged, I haven't aged oh, in the prettiest manner and some things sag and some things. I just have gotten to the point where I don't want to show off a lot of, a lot of me. <laughs> so I take advantage of the accessories and I cover up every once in a while. One of the things I don't like a lot are sleeveless blouse or sleeveless dresses. And so this is my attempt to wear uh, something sleeveless where I actually feel comfortable. This is a actually a panchette. It's a summer panchette uh, I found on Ravelry. It's a free pattern and it was originally designed, um, I don't remember the name of the original designer, I'm sorry, but you can check it on Ravelry, but it was then adapted. It was then adapted uh, by yarndesignersboutique.com by a lady at yarndesignersboutique.com and she created it using worsted weight wool. I think it was a combination of wool and acrylic that she used in worsted weight. And I just, I saw it and I said, well, you know, I think if I use some cotton, 100% cotton that I have around there, and I use a very big hook, I could make that very drapey and use it as a collar, an extended collar, to put on top of the couple of sleeveless items that I have around there, which aren't many, but, but they are, they, they do exist. And so this was it. This is my attempt to create that summer ponchette um, by yarndesignersboutique.com. And I'm looking for the, the yarn. This is the yarn that I use, 24-7 cotton. I know that a lot of designers, you know, the, the more fancy designers dislike the use of 100% cotton for making garments, but I think it just has its place. I wouldn't use it for anything or for everything, but I do like the way, I do like the way the sturdiness of the yarn is, it's almost like crocheting with string or with some, some very thick string, but I do like the way the sturdiness of it um, helps with the drapiness so that it's not like if I had done this maybe in silk that I did have some silk around there um, it probably though it would have been very drapey you might not have been able to have any stitch definition you might not have actually seen the stitch definition so I like the way I can see the stitch definition in this these are just scallops and this is just this mesh that's created in between two rows of scallops at the top and at the bottom and I think that if you just continue this mesh, you can make it as long or as short as you as you like it. You can make it shorter as a collar, or you can make it even longer as a, a longer um, poncho or caplet. So this was just something that, again, was left behind by Clarissa Smith when she left. I believe she had purchased it to make. She had a project in mind with it and then never made it. This is the lemon color. This is the lemon color. And... This was what I started out with. This is what I have left. I, I wanted to use it all, but there's still some grams left here. I use, she, in the pattern, the designer recommends a 6.5 millimeter hook, obviously, because I was using, I wasn't using worsted. This might, it could be a DK. It's not exactly a fingering, a little bit thicker than a fingering, but Still, if you'll notice on the label, they classify it as a four medium over here. And they're saying that the largest hook you should use is a four millimeter. <coughs> so yeah, maybe they would consider it a fingering. But um, I wanted it to be drapey, so I used a six millimeter. It was uncomfortable. Well, crocheting with cotton is very uncomfortable because uh, it, it's, it sticks, <laughs> it grips onto everything, but
but um, I do like, I do like for the most part, I like the finished project. I, I like the way it just looks like something to throw on myself. At the beginning when I was making it, I, I felt like I was wrapping myself up in a doily, but, but that's okay. I like the way it looks, and so I'm happy with this me made um, object. So that's my first finished object for the week, and mm, no, it's not my only finished object. I do have a second one. So since we're talking about about finished objects, I might as well go on to the second one. My second me finished object for the week is a bag, a project bag that I also had no intention of making, except for the fact that uh, watching on Instagram, I was seeing the different posts about the entries for the dodgy bag cow that is hosted by Crochet Luna and uh, Ali of um, I know it's drops of wonderful but I don't know if it's one drop or many drops uh, but you can check that out and she's starry eyed Ali on Instagram and so I thought about it for a moment and I said gosh I, I want to participate I want to participate in in that dodgy bag cal and I've been wanting to make up a, a bag for some time so this was my object here it's a drawstring bag and I can't take credit for the design, complete credit, because I made it based on this pattern from CN So I've had it in a while, and I actually realized how many patterns for bags I have in my pattern stash, and I'm going to have to look into that. I was making this one here. But you'll notice that it's quite different in the sense that this bag here is made with strips, bands of, diff of three colors of um, fabric that are sort of like sewn together, so it's more or less quilted. And then on the inside, it has a lining. And so I wanted to get, I didn't want to do that. Well, I do want to do that, but not, not for this bag. So what I did was I used the, the pattern piece for the lining twice, and I cut my inside lining what better way to receive May than with umbrellas because here it's been raining like crazy. And on the outside, I just used this gray because ever since I started, I had the idea that I wanted to put this cupcake applique, I wanted to sew it to the front. But you'll notice that part of my dodgy bag is because my cupcake is not is too far up. I had made a previous bag. I don't know if you remember some time back for Clarissa Beth, for I think it was before she left as a Valentine's Day present. Um, and I had put the heart too far to the bottom. And so I didn't want that to happen here, and now I put it too far to the top. But, you know, you learn and live. So the bag also has a... It has a circular bottom, which you attach this, this like sort of like cylinder that you create with the top part. And so the circular bottom, um, it's a little bit of quilting lines there. Notice they don't exactly meet in the middle, so another reason why it was dodgy. But um, totally liked the way it came out. I was even able to put a pocket on the inside. And so, yeah, I'm happy with it. The drawstring was actually an upcycling a towel that Clarissa Beth had brought back from, um, I think, Edinburgh or London when she was there in March two years back. And uh, she made a project bag out of it and left. This is like the edge of the towel, that, that, that um, seam binding that it has around the edge, sort of like, or that bias tape, sort of like, that it has around the edge. So and she had cut it out and left it and so I just singed the end and, and used it as my drawstring bag. And so that's another finished object based on this pattern but with a little bit of hacking. And um, the pattern part being this color was actually a mistake because I cut two, I had to do one piece of lining and one outside. And when I went to cut the bottom part, I cut the two pieces the same color. And I didn't want to throw away 
the piece that has already been cut, so I decided to use it on um, the outside. Okay, I guess it can also be considered a little bit dodgy because of the fact that I did leave raw edges on the inside, but, um, but it works. It works for me and I like it and I think I would actually repeat it. I would actually repeat a bag like this because I actually, it has nothing on the back, I actually like it. That will take us on to some works in pro progress because this is my second finished object. It's the only finished object that I had left to show you. And inside this bag is living one of the works, one of, one of the projects that I am working on. So let me present to you my... Remember this yarn from last week? It was the yarn that I was going to use to try and knit up some socks, right? This is the Exploding Tardis by Little Bean Loves. It was a set, and you know, it was a collaboration that she had with someone. Someone made the project bag, and she put in the yarn. I purchased the set because my oldest daughter was a fan of Doctor Who, and I gave it to her as a gift for Christmas, but she kept the bag she thought she could use for something else, but she returned to me the, uh, <laughs> the yarn because she said that she was never going to learn how to crochet or knit, so she returned it to me. And I took it upon myself this year. One of my goals was to actually make knitted socks instead of crochet socks, and so I promised I was going to begin those, and so I did. I am making them not two at a time, but I am making them consecutively. This is the f one of my first, the first socks. Ooh, that stands right out to you. It was a drop stitch that I picked up. <laughs> and obviously, the I didn't pick it up in the right color, the yarn. You can tell it's a mistake. I'm not doing too bad. I'm not doing too bad. I do think I am getting some ladders. Oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> this was with my toe. I think I'm getting some ladders along the side. But as Mina Phillips put it in her tutorial for uh, magic loop socks she said well if you do get some ladders they're just socks they're gonna go on your feet they're gonna be inside shoes nobody's gonna see them so don't make a big deal out of it and so I decided not to make a big deal out of it and just continue and so this has um, the toe until I reach 64 stitches and then it's got about 20 rows of what is the foot of the sock it's a long way to go, and one thing you'll realize is that when you use fingering weight, it takes a long time to grow. It takes a long time. So I've been working on this basically ever since I last podcast. That gave me two weeks. That's what I've done in two weeks. Well, not only this. I've also done the second sock. And it's not at the same. This is what I'm currently working on because I'm trying to bring it up to the same length as this. I'm missing five rows. What I'm doing is 10 rows on this one, 10 rows on this one, 10 rows on this one, 10 rows on this one. And those 10 rows take me about two hours, so that is not a, that is not a, a simple thing to say. Now notice I am using two different, uh, can you notice, yes, one is red and one is black, two different needles here because I didn't have 2.25 needles um, the same, out of the same brand. I had a clover in bamboo, but that was just... The yarn is grips. The grip is too uh, is too strong with the bamboo needles and uh, the needle. The bamboo needle clover needle is really short. It's about this long, and I don't know why. I just liked the longer needles. This is Shiago, size one or two point twenty five, and these are. I probably have no idea. I want to say Addy, but I know they're not Addy because um, the Addy are 40 and these are only 32. Let me see if it says it here. So I'm not a knitter, so. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember the name, but um, it's different. It's not Chiago. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. These are the likey. These are the, the likey that Elizabeth gifted me. I don't know if they're, if that's the way you pronounce them, but they're some type of Germish, some type of German needle. So that's what I've done on my socks. I'm just doing what they call a knitting a vanilla sock, which means that I'm just, I have no pattern on my uh, foot. It's just regular uh, stockinette stitch all the way up to when I get to the heel. On the heel, I will follow Nina Phillips' um, pattern for basic socks or the sock matician, whichever, to do a German short row, short row heel, and then I will continue on up to the leg. So <laughs> this is going to take me a while, guys, because if there's one thing I found is that it is slow. I am slow. Not it, but I am slow. Oh, and inside the bag, I've got my usual notions pouch. This one particularly I wanted to show you because it was gifted to us by Clarissa and I got the same little bag. It was made by uh, Pearl and Plum, Vivian of Pearl and Plum, and she gifted it to us at EYF, and it was so cool that my bag and my notions pouches match. <laughs> so let me share that with you. Okay, that's the first that you haven't seen. The other two works in progress, I did show them to you last week, so I am going to keep it short and just mention them. Um, the crochet one, you'll remember, was my alchemist cardigan. Alchemy, not alchemist. The alchemy cardigan by Jess of Make and Do, the Make and Do crew. And she, this week on a Monday, published the second part of the pattern. They are publishing, it's a cowl that's going on for four weeks. Each week they publish a different part of the pattern. And this week they published the instructions for the two front panels. Because this is a cardigan that is made in pieces and sewn together. I am, for this cardigan, using Your Inspiration's Caring Cakes. And this color is... What is it? Boho floral. And here's here's one that has all of the colors. One thing I did notice, this was on sale. This was on sale at Michael's when I went to, vi went to visit Clarissa. And, and it was on sale later on. Um, I think it was two for four or something like that. So it was a great sale. But what I did notice about them is that if you're trying to do like I am a garment, if you look at them, they don't are not all caked the same. The colors are not all caked in the same order. Well, basically, it is the same order. The same color comes after the same color. Like, for example, white is always followed by blue. White is always followed by blue. But you, they don't begin at the same point. This one begins at pink, and this one begins at blue. And I decided it wasn't going to bother me. I wasn't going to pay any attention to that. <laughs> so, last week... I had presented this part of it. It wasn't finished, but I have now finished the back completely. And I showed you last week how the color changes were not subtle. So if you're a person that is bothered by that, then don't use this yarn. <laughs> or if you do use this yarn, buy extra. And then what you do is just when you finish a row and you know you don't have anything left, for the next row, to complete another row, cut off your color there and then add the next color, which for me totally defies the purpose of having a roll that is continuously, uh, a cake that is continuously rolled up into the colors, but it's fine. I mean, I have seen people, I actually did purchase a pattern um, last week of another cardigan that's hooded where uh, it is made with one of these cakes, it's a chunky cake, and it um, the designer actually cut up, separated the colors to create her cardigan. So if you like doing that, fine. I decided it wasn't going to bother me, and I was going to call it a design element. <laughs> so that's the back, and I have one half right of the front, one front panel. There's a slit here. Because if you notice in the pattern, it's got a pocket. So this pocket has to be completed on the inside so that you can 
actually have a pocket. The slit is the only thing made right now. And then it will also have like a border uh, on this front piece here. So it'll be complete. It's got a lot to go yet. And it also is gonna have a border down, totally down the front here. I think it's a rib, so it's it's down the front and that will make, because right now if you look at it, it might appear, well, gosh, that's thin. <laughs> that's thin, but it will have a border there to complete it. So that's my front. Remember though, there are three pieces, well actually five pieces that will be sewn together because you have two fronts and two sleeves and then probably even the cuffs might need to be added later on. It's got a while to go. And then I was, um, I started it thinking that I could take it with me on a trip that I was gonna make to New Hampshire now in this May, but I don't know what I was thinking. I knew that it was a cow that they were producing the pattern pieces uh, one week at a time. So there was no way I could have it done because they've only done two pattern pieces. Another pattern piece comes out on Monday usually Monday afternoon, so you still have time if you want to join, if you're interested in that thing. It doesn't use this yarn. This is not the yarn they use. I believe they use Karen. They use some type of Karen. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a solid color. It was just, this was what I had. I had just recently purchased it, like I said last week, so it's what, it's what I wanted to use. And it's up to now, it's okay. The other work in progress that I have is the knitted shawl that I began as part of the Impressionist shawl by Curious Handmade by uh, Helen, no, Susan Hunt of Curious Handmade. And I showed to you last week my progress and I'll just share it quickly because I really haven't, I haven't gone at the pace that I had wanted to because this is a crescent shawl and so, Helen Stewart. I always get the names wrong. Where did I get Susan from? Helen Stewart of The Curious Handmaid. And um, it's all published now. It should be ending probably this week because it was going to end. It was running until the end of May. But I am still on clue number two. And the reason that I am on clue number two, I'm going to hold it far away so you can't actually read it, but you can actually maybe see. You see all of this here? This is the easy part. The whole row was done the same way. And now we got this part down there where you've got a thousand, well you don't have a thousand, but there's there's a pattern repeat that is not as simple because it's got various stitches, some stitches that I didn't know and I had to learn. And so it's at 350 stitches right now. Um, it takes me about 45 minutes to finish a row. So I'm at max two rows a day. And so I'll just show you what I have done up to now. This is what I have up to now. Last week I had finished clue one, which is basically here, at this part here, all that. And this is what I have of clue number two, which was um, some more lace here in the middle. And up here at the top, what I'm working on right now is supposed to be a some type of da a design. It, was, it looks a little bit like a leaf or a lily pod design. I don't know. But it's a design made with intricate patterns. Patterns that require you to think about what you're doing and to take it slow and to count. Notice all the stitch markers where she's counted off like every a certain amount of stitches so because all the patterns have to fit into that stitch length so that you it's easier to know if you miscounted and you can you can handle that early on that's what I am working on right now you'll remember that the yarns are one um, superwash wool blend that we dyed here at home ourselves and that pink one is done with avocado avocado pits, avocado stones. And then the next, the second one was the Edinburgh colorway from Wool and Vine. And I was really surprised. She dyed some more up this week on different base. And I was really surprised to see how different it looks. It doesn't have as much blue. It doesn't have as much blue. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but <clears throat> that's what I saw. And then there's another color hidden in here that you can't really see, which is 
this darker color here, which is a silk and wool blend, as I told you last week, dyed by Little Bean Loves, as part of a set, a set of five, five hanks that were made up for a different project, but I had purchased it because I liked the colors because I wanted the blend of wool with silk. It's a lot cooler for the climate that I live in. And um, it's been around there for a while, so I decided to use it. It's all living in this beautiful bag made, made up and purchased from In a Pickle Knitting. Check her out on Etsy, In a Pickle Knitting. And so that's my works in progress for this week. And basically it's a, a short couple of makes because I am coming to you a couple of days earlier. And I'll explain to you why in a second. But let me just um, finish by sharing with you my project one runway, things that I would like to do. Because I think that from the presentation I did last week, I forgot to, to share this one with you. It's Gin O'Clock Cardi and by Iron Lamb, and it's a granny stitch. It's a granny stitch Cardi. It can be made in different lengths, and it just appealed to me. It just appealed to me because granny stitch is always an easy, mindless stitch to make up, and, and I like the idea of it being long. What is happening with my voice today? I like the idea of it being long. So yeah, that's another pattern in my runway that I want to at some time complete. I don't have the yarn for it right now. That's why I didn't start it. But um, yeah, it's in my list of things to do. Also during the previous week in the US, we celebrated Mother's Day. And so I did get a couple of yarny gifts for Mother's Day. One of my already shared with you last week because it came in early which was a uh, kit to felt up a fox. And um, I didn't felt the fox, but I did continue on my felting excursions of my, my delicacies. And so you'll see a new member to my cupcake galore this week. And so you'll see a new member to my felted delicacies, which is this week my red velvet. My red velvet. So we've got red velvet, we've got chocolate, and then we've got, I don't know, what does that look like to you? Lemon? Pecan? I don't know. Some type of uh, calorie-free cake. So I did work a little bit on that. And, but I didn't work on the felting gift that I had received for Mother's Day. I did also receive from my older daughter two cakes of yarn that she purchased for me. This is again from Little Bean Loves and it's her Hagrid's Hut. Okay, so it's a gradient, goes from yellows all the way out to browns. There is no way to get um, two identical socks out of this if you think about making a sock. It has 463 yards, so you would be able to get a, a one skein caplet like this or a shawlette out of it. So yes, that might be. This is just everyday socks, so it's merino nylon. And the other one she purchased for me was this colorway is called Molly Weasley. And the reason I had asked her to get this for me was because uh, Kayleen had just dyed up a thumb. And when Chloe Smith left, we had exchanged some yarns. And she took, um, I think it was some, some yarn that I had that was a mustard color. And I knew I wasn't going to wear it because it's not a color that looks very good on me. And she loves that color. And it's in the trading, she gave me Molly Weasley that she had in her stash. This is the first dye lot of Molly Weasley. So 
there is a considerable difference, I think. May basically, in the amounts of the, those darker grays, I'm not seeing them here in the cake. But I had two of these. She had three, but she only wanted to give me two. And so I wanted a third one so I could make a garment. Molly, Molly Weasley always says garment to me. Some type of cardigan, sway, loose cardigan. So I wanted another one. I believe now if I were to use this to make a garment, I am going to have to, um, you know, combine the skeins, a couple of rows of one and a couple of rows of the other, because I think this will, or I could fade them. I could just fade them and, and just say it's a design element because they're, they're not the same. Yeah, maybe I will fade them. We'll see. But I love that colorway and it's so squishy and I have it there because I take it out and look at it every once in a while and then I put it back. So now that I have the third one, maybe I'll actually make something out of it. So that was my yarny acquisitions for Mother's Day. I hope you all had a nice Mother's Day if you celebrated and you had a nice time with your um, family members. And so I guess that's about it from my life update. The only other thing I'll mention is that the reason that I am podcasting a couple of days earlier, I usually podcast on Tuesday and put them up on Wednesday, is because I have a trip planned for this Wednesday. I'm going to New Hampshire to visit uh, my son for about 10 days. And so I wanted to have the podcast recorded. And we just got internet reinstalled in our home after Maria, what is that, about eight months? Well, I had to cancel with the original company because they they decided they weren't going to pick up the pieces with us over here in these residential areas. And so I, I signed up with a new company, and they installed. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to upload it from my home. We'll see, because I got up this morning and there is no internet, so I don't know. But... Um, I wanted to record it before I left, get it up, and um, be able to share it with you, so that I can make that uh, two-week limit and not, and you know, go on to my vacation with my mind free. That I um, I can just work on my projects over there and not really have to worry about filming, filming a podcast. So. We'll see what happens on my trip to New Hampshire. Maybe I can meet up with somebody from the yarning community that you know, and and uh, I'll let you know about that. In any other case, I will be in my son's home, and he's got a big house, and it is empty, and I will have time to myself day in and day out to craft as much as I like, hopefully, because my husband is going with me, so I don't know. Hopefully that'll happen. So I'll get back to you. In the meantime, if you have liked sharing with me, please hit the like button below and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Remember that all of this keeps us on um, being able to produce more content for you because more people, we get more exposure. So if you have enjoyed sharing with me, please do that and come back. Come back in two weeks time and I will be here again sharing hopefully some of this. <laughs> some of this will be done and if not, well I have started something new that I would like to share with you. And in the meantime, keep yourself safe, keep yourself healthy, and keep crafting. Until we meet again, bye bye!